Hi guys, I'm Elle and welcome back to my ethical fashion YouTube channel. If you're new here, I upload weekly and I'm super excited to get into this week's video. So today I'm going to take you through a full day of cultural exchange at the National Museum of Mexican Art in Chicago, Illinois. It happened on October 18th on a Friday and it was part of Chicago Fashion Week. And it was just a way for us to explore fashion through this rich heritage lens by exploring Mexican artisanal techniques techniques and as a Mexican-American I was super curious about what I was going to learn but I was also super nervous because it's such a trike and I had to take so many trains so if you want to see the journey of going to this really cool event stay tuned okay so when we rolled up we had already gotten a bit lost in Pilsen which is like the Latino neighborhood in Chicago but honestly like when we were there we were ready to dive in okay like it was such an immersive event that they had promoted it was done in partnership with Muse Creative I'm not sure if I'm saying that right and then Antalicas which is like an artisanal fashion brand and then again the museum and so when we arrived we actually got there right at 9 a.m we then went to go to the bathroom and that that set us back about seven minutes and it was kind of stressing me out because I had a feeling something was happening and so when I went to go check they were actually calling our names I was like oh no like we're late but technically we're here and so when I walked in I'm like I'm here this is my name my family's coming they're still in the bathroom and everyone was staring at us and asking what our names were in such an urgent like fast tone but I was like okay like I'm not gonna let this stress me out too much and I was so focused on learning from the founder of of the artisanal fashion brand. Her name was Mildred and she is a really renowned expert on traditional Mayan craftsmanship. And so after all the suffer, after paying so much money, we like finally sat down after roll call and I was ready to be there from literally nine to five. But I had already known I wasn't gonna stay the full time, but I was like, okay, it's gonna be like a nine to five job. Like I'm gonna be there all day with my family. And honestly, my only expectation was what was advertised, which was a unique cultural perspective to the fashion industry by celebrating the artistry and legacy of Mayan textiles but I was a little sad when they didn't really go through introductions maybe in my head I was expecting you know very historical detailing of Mildred's Mayan's background but she didn't it was a very vague introduction of all the hosts which I get for personal reasons I just had this expectation for some reason and in my head I was like okay well I guess they'll explain like the journey of the world of Yucatan cross stitch of all the other things we're going to be learning like the techniques further on. So the event was broken down into three events or you can say like three workshops. We immediately got started on the first workshop. They gave us a little toolkit that had like a seam ripper and some fabrics. Immediately I was like really confused. They didn't explain anything to me. I just had like images too in the kit that showed what we were generally going to do. And then they had the same or similar, I'm not quite sure, similar image on a projector, but they kept saying it was at the wrong angle. So I was like, mm, this is fun I don't know what's happening and so everyone was scrambling to figure out what was happening what fabrics they needed what threads the proper everything they were just like okay like does this, this go with this like what are we doing we didn't even know what workshop we were working on so that just kind of gives you the vibe of what we were trying to figure out for the first like 30 minutes but I was like whatever like I'm spending time with my family like this is my artisanal you know work I need to be patient right class also started like late it was around 10 30 and then with the confusion we were just like trying to figure things out and I realized that what we were actually doing was the Yucatan cross stitch which is a technique of Mayan heritage we then had to look at the visuals that they gave us to practice the techniques that was kind of semi-guided by the instructor but I started to panic because I didn't know what I was supposed to be doing and I was like okay like maybe I should roll with this but I was just starting to have a panic attack with everything combined together but I was acting chill and the instructor was going to person person so I'm like okay like let me wait for this and instructor to come over and help me and so I was waiting for her for most of the workshop to help me figure out how to cross stitch because I don't know how to cross stitch but one of the things that I noticed is that the instructor didn't really speak English or Spanish so I think there were some language barriers to learn this artisanal technique and there was a translator but she seemed to be unsure how to facilitate the meeting and how to make the cross stitch so she was giving us vague instructions as well and yeah we spent like the two hours just trying to like figure out the right way to do the cross stitch which is honestly a different technique from normal western cross stitch there was a rhythm we couldn't really quite get a handle on there was counting involved to get the right image right on our little piece of fabric and if I try to explain how the artisan was doing the exercise I really couldn't 
couldn't explain it to you. She was just going to each person and doing it for them and I don't really learn that way so I didn't really understand what she was doing but as I try to do the cross stitches I really learned how to have patience but I also was starting to think like what does this mean like what's the historical context so I started googling a lot of things while I was figuring out cross stitch and then I came across that cross stitch is also known as punto de cruz and can be traced back to the pre-hispanic era before the Spanish colonizers but European cross stitch techniques eventually emerged with indigenous and bordery traditions which then gave birth to very unique art forms that we know today as punto de cruz but I think the version that the artisan was teaching us was one of the pre-colonizer cross stitch techniques because even expert fashionistas in the room were like what is this like how are you counting this like what's happening like they couldn't even get a handle on it if you looked at me I hadn't even touched a thread or a needle in years so imagine my confusion I didn't even know what a cross stitch was at that point so to have other people be so confused and just also was like oh we're all learning <laughs> and then later when I was preparing to film this video I had researched that Mayans actually gave the cross stitch the name of I'll insert it here which literally means counted thread ancient Mayan women adored their garments with intricate patterns using colored thread floral motifs and delicate designs and they were often inspired by nature leaves and birds that reflected the region's lush landscape and biodiversity so for the two-hour workshop specifically I personally got a better idea of how to form the X shaped stitches on fabric which is honestly a very painstaking process it requires a lot of precision and skill and yeah it gave me a new respect for fashion and for generational skills especially given the roots of Yucatan embroidery which traces you know way back to the times of ancient Mayan the instructor also explained that beginner artisans were usually mark the fabric lightly while the more expert artisans are the ones that do the actual cross stitch in Yucatan there are textile artists both women and men across the state within a lot of municipalities but the art is slowly dying as people move to look for work elsewhere and you could then those who practice could have mastered at least 30 of the 40 existing embroidery stitches since embroidery stands as one of the most significant symbols of identity and hopefully of economic progress and traditionally women in Yucatan learned this craft from their mothers and grandmothers passing it down from generation to generation to hopefully keep this art alive and this embroidery technique is primarily featured in Guayabera which is a traditional Yucatan men's shirt and then the yipir which is a long loose fitting dress but cross stitches became extremely fashionable in Europe during the 19th century and then it became so popular in Mexico that it eventually overshadowed a lot of other stitches but after that first workshop we went to lunch then and we wandered around the National Museum of Mexican Art where we to our surprise had a lot of their of the dead theme events we could go to there's also a artisanal market we were way behind schedule and i was actually planning on leaving at 3 p.m and my family could only really stay with me for those two workshops so yeah we were planning on leaving early planning to only do the second workshop and then leave but i had actually been super excited to learn this artisanal technique that they had originally said was going to be the second workshop so i was like oh they changed it up on me but i was like okay whatever like it's not a huge deal. So for the second workshop, I already was familiar with this rescue stitch. I was exposed to it through my mother who had experience with it. And if you don't know this Mayan rescue stitch, it's basically known as white work too, if you want to call it that, because after the Spanish conquest in Mexico, Catholic nuns kept their churches provided with white work. And this term is used for textiles where the stitching is the same color as the foundation's fabric, which is usually a white linen, which includes the technique of drawn thread work. And what with this, these selected threads are pulled from the ground fabric and the rest are bound and reinforced with decorative stitching. So we spent two hours, you know, pulling out threads, a process also known as unraveling. And this technique has been perfected by communities in Aguascalientes in central Mexico. It can take months to create one piece under the hands of an expert artisan. And the result is actually really beautiful. It's a very detailed work that resembles lace. And this technique is rare to find, especially since it takes so much effort Effort. It also takes a ridiculous amount of focus and it's really an eye strain as I realized But yeah, it can also be found in Mexican tablecloths, baby clothing, and yeah, throughout the process I was really struggling, not gonna lie My neurodivergent brain and ADHD tendencies were really not having it I was watching YouTube at one point with my AirPods in to focus and I was still not getting it I was really restless and the brain rot, you can clearly 
tell was getting at me by sitting at this place the whole day without being obnoxiously online. So uh, yeah, I honestly called it and I was like, let me go take a break. And I went to go visit the museum again, just to roam and get some more footage because I wasn't sure if it'd have time to visit, especially how pushed back the schedule was. And I was a little bit worried about like not getting any footage. But if you want a tour of the museum, it'll be at the end of this vlog, by the way. But when I went back to the workshop, they were still at the dethreading and I had barely made any progress and everyone else were talented and skilled and motivated and dedicated and yeah it was cool to see. It's closely tied to milpa which is a traditional agricultural system that provides sustenance for families and has contributed to the existence of the jungle and its biological richness. So embroidery is so much more than just what meets the eye and although men don't really wear you know embroidered garments after the traditional embroidered diapers when they are young during birth they do still wear it during early childhood and like through baptism or in handkerchiefs that their wives or daughters give them but other than that like they don't usually wear it or embroider it some traditional dancers called jaraneros embroider it which is largely present in their costumes embroidery is more traditionally present in women's cultural landscape and their daily and ceremonial lives at birth and baptism they're covered in embroidered diapers and ibritos as well and as they age they become embroidered blouses that are worn daily and then until their death and during religious festivals they dress up in embroidered ternos which are luxury yipiles yet in yucatan clothing has stopped being woven because of colonization making plain fabric replace their brocades woven into mayan textiles but yuthan is the state with the most embroidery techniques in all of mexico and embroidery now adorns garments for life cycle rituals both religious and circular and for official celebrations and have all sorts of designs and colors that really help identify the regions and towns they were located in. So by the end of the second workshop, I learned that we were really doing the prep work for the Mayan artisanal technique that I thought we were gonna learn first that I didn't realize could go on top of other thread work. I was way behind on my progress and my family was getting a bit tired and restless. So we decided to leave around 3 p.m. to see the museum and head back home at a reasonable time. So let me show you the museum.
So my final thoughts is that it was great being exposed in a small way to artisanal embroidery and how it pushed me to research this art form further. This is even more important than ever before when such a labor intensive process and it's so skill based and yet it's dying out. The availability of commercially produced clothing and threads has increased given fast fashion and has pushed handiwork down. And sadly, women have slowly abandoned this handwoven artisanal skill that have been passed by generation from generation. But overall, it was a really great experience, despite the confusion, despite the stress. And yeah, I do have a tendency of expecting a bit too much, and I was a bit restless. There was just a lot of information, very little context. I am slowly learning more and processing information. So if any of this information that I put in the videos at NACRA, I'm always open to learn. I simply googled, and that's not always a reliable source of information. And yeah, let me know what you thought of this video. I make videos every week, so feel free to subscribe, put on your post notifications, and let me know what you want to see next. Until the next time, peace and love.